Hi, welcome back once again. So in the last video, we talked about MongoDB server, that what it is and how we can utilize it for storing our data for an API. In this video, we're going to install Compass into our computer. <clears throat> so to install that, all we have to do is simply open up a new tab and type MongoDB. And here in the product sections, come here and here you will find a community server. Okay, so click on this community server. And here you can able to find all the products which MongoDB provides. So here you will find uh, MongoDB enterprise server, community server, and many things. So we are the one we are interested in this. Okay, so click on this, and from here you can install. So simply click on this download, <coughs> download, and the process will start downloading. So just wait for a few minutes and let the downloading complete. This file is quite big. So the download finally the downloading is completed. It was a really big file 200 I think close to 300 MB. So let's come here and let's come back here and let's get into my download sections and this is the one which we have installed. So I can simply click on here and just wait. It's preparing for installation and it's saying that you have to make it next. You have to accept the terms and condition next and simply choose the custom complete one okay next and next and install so this is stalling the mongoose just wait for a moment make it yes do not cry my child do not cry Mazi. installing mongo compass and finally the installation process is completed so once the installation process gets completed you will have a similar dashboard like this and here we can able to see all the data instead of going to our mongodb servers so the reason why i have installed you this application because not every time we're going to visit and log into our mongodb servers and do the check the data every time okay so we can do that right here in mongodb's compass okay so here i have to pass the string and we can able to see everything okay so right now i can see that i have already co co connected a couple of things so to create a new one all you can do simply click here in the plus icon and or you can go here and from here you can create a new one if you want to create a new and let me delete the old one so this is how it will look and here i have to pass the url okay the string url which i want to connect so i can come here and if i click on this connect so you will come here and here you will have two options i don't have a mongoose db compass so if you don't have you can download it from here it will give you this options and you can pick any one from here so i have already done that so i will click on this i have a mongo db compass and from here i will select this letter make sure you in the click on the latest one and simply copy the string so this is the string we have to use okay so we'll simply copy it, or you can click here it will copy and let's close it and now i'll come to my compass and i will simply paste here just remove this and paste here and this is the file name which we have created so let me come bring it back so this is dollar so this is the database i want to connect and come to my compass and instead of this here i have to type the password which i have written okay so uh, the password is so this is the password you make sure you type your password here whatever password you have given when you were creating this okay so click on this connect and it will connect to your database server just wait so here it is so finally we have connected our mongodb database to our compass and here we can able to see all the data so right now we have nothing because we haven't created any data and here you can find a couple of tabs you can change the display arrangement here from here you can also create a database so you can give a name to your database whatever you want so i'll call it say prodoct product and same thing i want to call it here prodoct product okay this is the name and that's it and simply click on create database so here you get get the product database if i click here i have nothing inside this i can click inside this come to this here i'm into this database so if you have a data into a data json format so you can simply come here and upload it so let's come here i'll select this one and i'll get to the go to this one so where i have the data i have this data um, into this public and inside the public 
no not in this one i'll come up here into this data folder and first let me get out of that go to me let me go to the desktop desktop and let me get into the folder e-commerce e-commerce project and on this is the api folder which i'm working on this is my product folder not inside the product and product folder and this is the data folder and this is the sample data i will click here and i'll save it and i will simply click this and import so here you can see that now we have successfully imported all the data from our data json files and displaying right up here in my compass so if i come into my mongodb server if i reload this page i can able to find all the data right here in my mongos okay so just let's just wait so to check the data you can check the status the file size you can come here click on this cluster and you can go to this collection section and just wait so here all the product data is uploaded as you can see we have created this product and we have created this field name product and here we have all the data which we had in the sample data so this is one way to upload the data but we're going to write a script into our mongodb servers so we can easily upload it from there so you have both the option you can do it from here or you can do it from the mongodb server uh, in our server js file which i will show you which i will show you how you can write that script to which automatically upload the file whatever you have here okay so we're going to write the script so that's all i wanted to show you that how you can connect your compass and where you can see all the files if you come here you can see the number of documents so everything you can able to find so this is how you can connect your compass so in the next video we'll talk about that how we can connect the mongodb server with our applications and we're going to build some logic around that okay so that's it in this video hope you have found out everything that how everything's work how you can connect your mongodb shells to your remote database servers and upload data and i can read the data in the next video we'll connect with our application so let's move to that hi everyone welcome back once again so in the last video we have learned that how we can install mongodb compass into our computer how we can connect with our remote database server like mongodb in this video we're going to connect our mongodb server with our application so we can do all import import building data modules right down here okay so that's what we're going to do here so before we do that let's come here and let's go to the mongodb browser so here we are right this moment let's click here on this data folder database and this time we're going to use this connect your applications so here we have uh, this note so make sure you copy this this entire one and let's come back to visual code studio and remember that we have created this config file because this is going to be the sensitive data for my api okay so all the sensitive data we're going to put inside this config file and we do generally so when we push this data files this project into github we generally don't send this one because these are the sending data okay we totally ignore it okay so what i can do i create another environment variables where i'm going to pass this this string which i have copied so i'll say da da data b a s e base okay this is my database database and here i will paste the string Make sure you create your account and you paste your own string. If you paste the same string which I have done, you might get the error. And you don't need to paste the same one because ultimately I'm going to change this after the tutorial. Okay, so you can't able to access this one because I see many many students copy the exact string and try to connect with the same same browser, same database, and they get the error and they say that their code is not working. So this is my so what i can do i want to do some changes here so what i can do i can simply copy this password and i say p a s s w o r d i'll give this in a capital letter and everything you will find it here and here you can see my first product database so let's come back to my mongos and let's cut this portion because we don't need this one and here you can see that we have given the name of our project so currently we are into this daughter hussain so this is the name you have to provide right here the project which you want to connect you might have different project in our database so that's the project name you have to give here so make sure you replace this still here before the question marks and type d a u l a t h u s s a i in hussain 
so this is the name project name i want to give and i have stored this one and i also take the password which i have assigned to this project so this is the password i have given so this is my password make sure you provide your own many of you will i know that copy the same code and paste but i want to but i want you to provide your own otherwise it not work so here what i have done here i have taken the database string and the database password and now i can use it and connect my database with my api so to connect my api I can, so to connect my api i'll go to my server.js file and that's all we're going to do here right in the server desk file because this is the file which is totally responsible for the server all the things related to the server that's all we're going to hear in server ds file that's why i've given this name server so i'll come here and i have to install one more package which is a mongoose because we are using mongo database so we have to use install that package so i'll type n p m i m o n g o o s e mongoose and i want to install version 5 so make sure you install the same version if you don't install the same version the code which we're going to write down the line it will not going to work so make sure you have to be in the same version because they are there are latest version but i want to go with this because i haven't tested the major changes which they have done in the new version but so that's why i'm going with this version so make sure you install version 5 and hit enter and this will install the mongoose package into your computer okay this will take hardly 30 seconds to get installed okay this time it's pretty fast so if i come to my packages and file here you can able to see that i have mongoose in my dependency because i need mongoose to work my application okay that's why i have not used in say dev dependency it's in dependency what i want and that's all the thing i have to do to using mongoose so i'll come into my app.js file let me bring it down and now i'm ready to connect my mongodb server so i can come here i'll take a const and i'll say mongoose and g double o s e mongoose are required i have to import this mongoose to use so i'll say mongoose and visual code code studio is really very smart it will give me this auto suggestions so here i have imported mongoose in my files and i can simply come here down and now i can create one more variables i'll say const d b const db and this const db and you remember in my config file here i have to provide the password and that password which i have inside this so you can do one thing you can simply provide this password here and it will work in the same way but i want to keep password and database string separately so it's not become clutter and it's become more readable form so if i want to change anything i can change this here it will automatically take place inside my inside my url i don't need to do anything here sometime while making the changes by mistake we remove something else and the entire application gets shut down so that's why i try to keep these two things separate so these are the two things i have taken so what i can do i can take come here and i have all these variables where so i have all the variables which i have created in my process dot environment model okay environment so all the variables which i have created is available in process dot env so I can come here and I can say process dot e n v n in that I want to access which d a t a data v a s e base. So this is the database which I want to access this URL. I can come here and I can give this dot and I want to use the replace function because I want to replace that password with the actual password. So I can say replace inside this I have to provide this one. So this string I have to provide. So this is the one which I want to replace. I can copy. I can come to my server JS file and here. So this is one I want to replace. With what? Okay. So again I will call this process dot e and v, and I want to replace with the password. So okay, password p a s s w o r d password. If I save it. So here what I have done successfully. I have replaced the database password with the actual password. Okay now if if i console log let's see because i haven't console log this one so if i console log this db what i will get so let's come to my original terminal and if i make any changes here so here you can see that i can getting the entire string so here you can see that our password is successfully changed and because of this replace function we have used here so this is the string and we have successfully changed the password okay 
now we have to use the variable so let me get rid of this and this time i'm going to use this mongoose package which we have installed so i'll say mongoose dot connect because we want to connect and inside this we have to type the variable and in this we're going to take the object so first thing is going to be user index is going to be true just do it the way i'm doing it because these are the general convention in mongos 5 if we want to connect with our package okay with our database okay and the second one is going to be this url parse is going to be true and the third one is going to be modified this modify is going to be f a l s e false and remember this will return me a promise and this will return me a promise so i need to convert that so i'll use then a callback function so what i want to log it i will take a say cons and i'll take another function and i want to console log out okay i'll console log out log dot connection c o n n e c not okay c o n con dot connection connections okay connections and the second thing i want to check whether my database is connected or not so i'll, I'll do that as well so i'll say console dot log and i'll say data data s u c c e s u c c e s s f u l l y fully connected c o n n e c t e d connected so if i save and if i bring my console up and here you can able to find all the objects you know all the array arrays inside that we have this object and this object is coming from this con dot connections which is from mongodb as you can see disconnected connected all the variables we are getting and this is the string which we have provided our project strings false and all the values which we have assigned here you know library phrase all these things so don't need to worry about any one of these things the only thing you have to keep in mind that our database is successfully connected and that's what we are console log out here so finally we have connected our remote database server with our application in the next videos we're going to build modules we will find different ways of writing document in our web application so so far what we have done we were writing in our sample.js with the post method so we'll follow all those method and we're going to do some changes we're going to build a model so we can write into our database so that's what we go in from the next video so let's move to that Hi all of you welcome back once again in the last video we had successfully connected our mongodb server with our application in this video we are going to build a simple product schema that will validate the data which we are uploading into our database so it's going to be a test schema later down we are going to separate this entire test schema model into a separate file because here in the product you can see that we have so many parameter to fill out for the product and we are going to validate each of this each of these fields like name duration group difficulties we have to validate all these fields before we upload into our database so let's build a simple product schema for testing okay so you will get your hand dirty so i'm going to do in right inside this server js file because i have already connected my mongoose with that here and that's what we're going to use here so my server is running so let's come down here and let's bring it up let's zoom a bit so you guys can have a look okay let's bring it around so here what i will do i'll take a variable this time i'll call it product schema and i'll use this new mongoose dot schema and again i'm not making up this it's there in mongoose documentation you can guys can refer this okay so inside this i have to provide all the field which I want to validate through this schema so here I'm going to validate a couple of fields not all the fields to make you understand that this is how you can build the schema with mongoose so the very first field I want to validate is the name and it's going to be it and I'll take an object okay so I'll tip type type is going to be string because uh, not a number string and the name must be required because every product will have to have a name so it has to be required so i'll say required and here i can pass the message 
so requires to true if you make it false it not required if you make it true it will required or if you don't provide this required field that means it's optional so and here i will pass the message if someone's not provide the name so i want to display what message so that the message i'm going to write here so i'll say product must have a have a name have name okay so this is the message i want to display and the second field i want to take is this price see price and i'll send an object and type is going to be number because this time we are taking number and it's also going to be required required and again same thing i have to do it's a true and i have to pass the message so i'll say product must have a peer price and let's save it let's come down here and i want to take one more field okay so i'll come here and that's going to be reading reading it's going to be object and type is going to be obviously number because user will provide the rating in numbers and here i want to make it default so i'll say default is going to be 4.5 so here what i have said in the rating that it's truly really up to user whether they want to provide the rating for the product or not if they don't provide rating so i want to set the default rating to 4.5 if they provide rating so that value i'm going to set in the rating so this is the three model which i have taken here for the testing purpose so what i can do i can simply come here and i can take another variable and this time i'll call it new okay let's take a capital letter let's take a simple new product and here again i'm going to call this mongoose model model and here i will pass the new PRODUCD product the variables which we have declared and here we have to call the schema which we have defined right up here so this is the product schema we have taken that's what we have to pass pass here so here we have successfully created the store schema now it's time to create okay now we it's time to create the product all the products with the help of the schema so this time what i will do i'll take another variable and i say the product and i'll use this new keyword and i will use the variables which we have created here and inside this we're going to pass the value of the schema which we have defined here so first thing is name and i say first thing is going to be head phone and the second one is going to be price and it's a number you can pick any number and the third one is going to be ting ratings it's a rating okay rating and rating is going to be 3.5 so here i have defined the schema and their value and as you can see that order doesn't matter you can put put rating here and name down so order doesn't matter so make sure you have to follow this general convention so when you want to use this mongoose schema model so these are the general convention you have to follow so let's come down here so here we have defined that what are the value which we want to upload into our database with the help of this mongoose schema and here i will call this product dot save so i want to save this data so that's why i'm calling this save function and it will return me a promise so i want to i want to convert that okay so i'll say then and inside this i want to check that what are the data as i'm uploading to my database and i want to console log that out that data so i'll i'll Take this arrow function and i'll say con and in this i will take an arrow function i will simply console log out the data console.log and i will simply pass the data head down here and i want to catch the error while uploading the data into my database server sometime what's happened that your data your database get down or may you might have any problem in your code so you have to catch that error as well so for that here i'm going to say catch method c a t c h catch and i want to catch the error it's going to be an arrow function and this i want to console log out the error console dot log and simply what i want to log i want to log out error and i want to say mthi something went wrong so this is the message i want to display when something's get wrong so this time if i save 
so before you save make sure your browser is running so my browser is already connected and if i save we'll simply able to log out all the information which we have defined here and this data will save in our database server so let's do it let's save it and let's bring it up and here you can see so that's wonderful so we have successfully created the product detail with the help of this mongo schema and we have also got this id and this id is coming from mongoose so earlier what we have did that we were calculating the product length database length and on the base of that we generating the id manually but here we are getting automated id with the help of mongoose so if i save one more time so i have created two products so two products so let me take you to my database so here we have already connected my database to the compass and let's try to refresh this one more time and here we have a folder dollar let's click on that and here you can see inside the dollar folder here we have a new product and that's the name we have provided here let's come back here so this new product we have provided so let's come up here here we have done it as you can see new product so this is the name we have given to our product and that's what we are getting here so here we are getting two data rating the value the name we have defined the price and the oh, you will notice one thing the id is different so each will each product will have a different id so this is how we can create data in our database so this is a test model we're going to build a big data model which will validate a lot of things and we're going to set a lot of condition in that so that's it in this video in the next video we're going to create a couple of folders and we're going to refactor our entire code before we start writing and building this schema models for our product validator okay so see you in the next video hi welcome back once again so in the last video we had created product in our database using this mongo schema model so in this video we're going to refactor the entire code base we're going to create a couple of files and folders and just simply refactor the entire code base before we move ahead and start building the complex schema models because as you can see we have a lot of data here and we have to validate each on one of this so the school this the mongoose model which we build is going to be very big okay so it's very good to refactor the code along the way we are building this api okay so what i will do i'll come here and i'll create another folder and this time i'll call it models because we're going to create one models for the products and the second model is going to be for the users and inside that where it is inside this model i'll create a file which will call product model dot js and let's create one more file for the user so usc user model dot js inside this we're going to write down for the users so let's remove this config file and here i have my app js so let's close this for a while and let's close this user as well so here what i have to do is first thing i have to do is we have written this tour schema model so simply grab this code because we do we don't want this here we want to keep this in a separate folder so simply come here all the way down and simply select and cut this one and come to this product model and simply paste so here we are using mongoose so we have to import mongoose as well so let's come here simply copy this you don't need to remove it from the server's file because here we are connecting from our database we need in our product model as well so simply bring it down and i'll simply paste it so here we have our mongoose model save it and you might get an error so let's come here and let's save it one more time so nothing's happening okay our server is running absolutely wonderful so here we have to do a couple of changes okay so the very first change i want to do is right now i don't want to save this data into my database so i will simply get rid of this and i want this new so these things going to be the same and i don't want this as well simply get rid of this and here what i will do i will simply say model model dot export export in new product and this this model we're going to import into our in this folder product controller okay so before we move ahead to that 
let's come down here and let's save it so let's open our product json file and here you can see that we have a lot of data we have a start location we have a average rating we have a rating quantity image data id id is going to be generated by mongoose name durations so we have to check for each of this each of these fields which user are providing and we have to set the validator for that as well so here what i will do first thing i will do i'll take this i have already taken this name price and rating so it's going to be a quite long so let me quickly do it and then i will explain that what i have done okay if i'm going to type all these right down here so it's going to take a lot of time so let me do it very quickly so here i have created the complete product schema of all the fields which we have in our product data json okay all the field i have taken here and i have set some conditions some validator there so let's talk about that so here i have taken name so the very first thing i want to take the name of the product so here i have defined a string and the second one is a required field i'm displaying the message and it's going to be unique okay i'm saying that each product should have a unique name and i'm here i'm providing trim to true so sometimes what happened that the user provide the name and they in provide some extra space so i'm removing that space and making them side by side so that's why i'm using the trim function of mongoose and here i'm setting the condition for the product name so here what i have done max length so max characteristics you can use so max characteristics you can use is up to 40 unless it's 10 so this is the validator which i have used so if a user try to put the name of the product more than 40 they will they will get an error if they provide less than they will get an error if they do if they add any kind of extra space it will automatically remove that space and give it in a good format if the user don't provide the name it will show an error and this is a required field so this is what i have done in the name field so here i have taken the duration so duration is a number and it's a required and the reason why i have taken duration because each product is going to have a certain offers offers for a limited time that's why i have taken this duration don't need to worry if you think that you don't need this one you can simply ignore when we'll render in our template we're not going to call this data but i built this models and i try to include everything because it's going to be a general model it includes all the product or services you can easily use it in every product and service model so i have taken max group size this type is number and it's a required fill so if you are providing that the user should buy a particular quantity not more than a particular quantity then you can set that kind of conditions here i have set the difficulties and here type is going to be string because there are three difficulties i'm providing easy medium and diff this difficult so it's going to be a required fill and here i'm setting some condition and for setting this condition here i have taken this variable e and m and m so here these are the three value user can allow to enter and if they provide any any not and if they provide any other names instead of these then they will have this error message okay so they have to pick any one of this value from the difficulty level here here and here i have taken the average rating so it's going to be a number and they by default is going to have a 4.5 ratings so the minimum rating they can provide is one and the maximum rating they can provide is five so here i have taken the rating quantity so how many ratings a particular product is getting so i will calculate the entire rating and i will display beside the product suppose i'm displaying a product on my home page so there it's very good that you can show the complete rating that how many people have provided the rating at that location and that increase the conversion so here i have taken the rating quantity here i have taken the price so type number and it's a required field and here i've also taken this discount as you can see discount type is going to be number and here we're going to set the condition because we want that the user should get not more than 10 percent or 20 percent discount okay so that's kind of logic we're going to build here so i will show you how you can build that here i have taken the summary so user should provide the summary of the product and it's going to be trim and the same required function description should be there type is string and trim is there then we want to take the image of the product and image cover so user must provide the product image it's going to be a required field and and here you have noticed one thing that i have taken string so what i'm doing i'm not storing the entire image in my database i'm just storing the string value okay the product name 
the image name I'm not storing the image okay so that's why I have taken a string here and I have taken an image so here I have taken a array of strings so there might be a lot of images five four images and this is the cover image of the product and this is the other images of the product and here I have taken this created at so when the product is updated into the database so that's what I have done here so for that I have taken type is date and by default I have taken date dot now so the moment I will upload this data that's the date will assign to that particular date and selection false because when we send this data to the user I don't want that this data should be display for the user and I will show you everything when we call this in our postman where you will find everything okay and here what I have done start date so when this product got updated so that's what I have mentioned here and this is the model which I have built for this and I want to add one more model one more one more field here URL which is sometimes we call it slug so we have to add that as well for every single product so for that we're going to install a package so let's come here in the next terminal and let's simply clear the terminal and let me make it a big so you guys can have a look let's make it up and this time I'll say npm and the package we want to install is slugify gify so make sure you install the same one and hit enter and just wait the installation process will complete very soon so here we have successfully installed the slugify and what this package does it will create a slug for our product so every time a user will update a product it will have a separate product a separate slug and which we're going to create on the base of the name okay so let's come to this package json file and here we have our slugify package in our package json file so simply cut this out we have successfully done it and let's create one more field here so this time i'll call it slug and this slug is going to be a string string okay so here we have this one why i'm getting this error okay now it's gone so here I, we have created this slug so let's come down here and let's create one more fill which is going to be a duration week and the reason why i'm creating this duration week i'm keeping in mind that it's going to be reusable so this model we are building is going to be reusable for all the kind of products whether you are selling service whether you are selling product whether you are selling any vacations things like that so we are building a general model okay so for that i'm going to take a uh, one more one more fill and this is how we can create it so i'll come down here and here i'm going to call this product schema so product schema and i just want to tell you one more things so here what i am doing so here what i'm doing i'm just hard coding this value and these all data i'm going to fetch from my database but here what i'm doing i'm not storing this data in my tool models so this data would create it the moment will users save it on the browser on that time i'm not storing this on my database okay like the way we are doing here I'm just creating this week duration week on the base of the data when they will save the document okay so to do that I'll use this virtual property and in this I have to pass the name of the field so here we have images so in the same way we have to pass the name of the field so I'll this time I'll call it on duration week and let's come out of that and here I will call this get function get and inside this I'm going to run a function function and here I'm not taking arrow function because I need this keyword okay because I want to refer the durations and on the base of that I have to calculate the duration week so I'll come here and inside that I'm going to return this okay make sure you have to use this return and I will simply call this dot duration R A T I O and duration this is the name which I think provided so let's simply copy it and let's bring it down and yes this is the name and simply divide by seven so we are calculating duration week okay save it let's come to the original browser let's see is there any problem in our console no nothing is nothing's wrong here everything is working fine so let me repeat one more time what i'm doing here i'm taking this product schema using this virtual property and i'm creating a field 
that's called duration bake and the reason why I'm not adding here I can do the same thing I can add this right up here and save into my database but I'm not doing that because I can simply calculate it with this durations and why should I give unnecessary uh, why should I waste unnecessary space in my database so when the user will save it the document it will generate it on that time so to make this usable I can simply come here and I'll take an object so this time I will call to JSON JSON and in this you have to take another object and virtual virtual is going to be true so this is the one first one and the other one is going to be two object and this one is also going to be virtual is going to be true so if you don't use this this field we are creating dynamically will not get added to this this output this product details okay that's why we have used this one now we are done with this virtual property which we are creating now let's come down here and we have to create this slug so as you can see here we have taken this variable slug fluff and we have to create that as well so again I will use this product product schema and this time I'll use this pre function okay and what I'm doing here I'm using this pre function so the moment user will upload the data on that time so before the data get updated into our database on that time I'm creating a slug and how I will do that that's pretty easy I'll simply call save function okay so here I'm saying that the moment the data is about to save in the database before that we have to run this function okay that's what I'm defining here and simply I'll use this again I'll use this function regular function I'm not using this a uh, arrow function because I need this keyword so I can refer the name of the product so at this time I'll call this next because it will act, act like a middleware and here I will use the this keyword slug slug equal to I'll use the package which we have installed slugify ugify slugify inside this will take the this dot name this dot name not comma name and it's going to pass we'll pass a object to a lower is going to be true so I want the slug to be in lower case and here what I'm doing I'm simply taking this product schema I'm really running a pre function so before the data is about to save into the database we have to execute this functions and again I'm taking this regular function because I need this keyword so I can easily able to refer this model which we have built I'm taking this slugs so this slugs referring in this one so this slugs and I'm using this slugify package using this keyword so I can accessing the name of the products and this one this name and I'm converting the slugs into a lowercase and don't forget to use this next because it will act as a middleware okay so with this we have successfully created this two models and I think everything would be working fine so before we do anything right down here because we're going to do a lot of things here we have to calculate the review which we will do later so we have built the simple model so here we have all the models here we are generating the duration we calculating with the durations and here we are generating slug as well now we have already exported this functions and now it's time to create the product so I'll come here and into this product controller and in this product controller what we will do uh, let's make it downward in product controller and here we have to do the changes so simply we have to remove all these codes because we no longer going to read the data from our local database servers from here okay we need to read the data from our database so I'm just making this comment out so you guys will get the code so you will take their reference and we have to do a couple of changes as well so what are the what are the changes I want to do is I will simply I don't need this one because this will take care by mongoose simply comment out this one and I don't need this check body function as well because this will also take care by mongoose and the moment I will save I will get an error I have to get an error okay so it's error so what I will do I'll come to my simply come here and go to my router sections in my product router and here I can simply 
comment out this and I will simply remove this let me replicate this one so you guys will have this and comment this part and simply remove this code so let's remove this one completely and save it now we are back on track yeah everything is working fine so we have connected our database now let's come to this product control and let's import the model which we have created this model okay so here we are exporting and here we have to import the model so i'll come here so i'm doing right down here okay so i'll say const i'll give a name let's say let's call it new product product this name you can give whatever name you want to this part okay so i'll come it's going to be a required model require and here i have to define the path so where it is the data so i have this router in my model so i'll simply select this model and inside the model i have in the name is product model so i have successfully imported the data in my product controller let's save it right now we are not getting any error so we have built this model now let's test that okay so before we test we have to do a couple of changes right up here in product controller so we need to change a lot of things here so first thing we have to do is to simply get rid of this entire function entire function we don't longer need this one i think we need let's remove this part or just let's get rid of this all let's completely rid of this all okay rid of this all and what i will do now so here we have to do a couple of changes first thing we have to do is to convert this function create product function into an async function because here we are dealing with the database okay so that's why i want to convert that into an async function so async and i will take a try catch block because i want to catch an error as well so i'll say cat catch error will catch the error and in this error I will send a response response ATU status is going to be let's say I'll take this variable and I'll take a just send take a status it data is going to be fail and I want to send an error as a message so message is going to be an error so the complete error object I want to send so let's come up here and I'll take another variable say let's call it product and I'd, I will say await because it's a async function I will get a promise so I have to use this await and this time I'll call this new product variable which we have imported this one because this is the model which is responsible for validating the data and I'll call it create request dot body body so here what I'm doing here, I'm using this async function because here we are dealing with remote database server and promises. That's why I'm using this async function. So what I'm doing, I'm creating this. I'm using this model to create and this create is coming from the mongoos. Okay, so don't don't wrap your head around. So using this create function and where I want to create the data, I want to create the data on the body. So I'm using this request on body. So here I have this variable and I can use it to send the response to the client. Okay, so I can simply come here and I will send the response. So I'll say response dot status is going to be 201 because we are creating new document and I want to send the data back to the user in a JSON format. So I will, again, I will say status is going to be success if the data is successfully created success and i want to send the complete data object so data in this i want to send the complete data object so i'll say product i save it okay and with this i think we are ready to go with that so here let me brush it out once more time what i am doing with this function we are trying to create our data into our database and i'm using async function because here we are dealing with promises I'm wrap this entire function into a try and catch block so if there is an error I can easily able to catch that and here is a problem I think something's wrong here why we are getting this in error 
so everything is working fine now what we can do let's come to our postman and let's try it out so here we are in our postman here we are into our create sections and we are trying to create the data into our database so let's bring this out and for the timing what we have done we here we have the data which we try to create okay so we have all this data so if i hit send so here so here we are getting the response while creating the product so you have to be happy because whatever validator we have written in our product model it's working fine and here we are able to see all the messages that what is the problem and why we are not able to create the product in our database so here it's saying that name validator so what it is name validator and what is the problem we have here message a tool must have a price so somewhere here in this we haven't provided the price that's why we are getting this error message and what else to must have a price so this is the only error we are getting here and here is another one new product validator no this is not that one so everything is working fine so product validator failed because of this price if i come to my database this and try to reload one more time so before i do that let's quickly delete this all because this time we are creating actual data okay let's delete it quickly mm, we have photo go so i created this while i was testing this data so right now we don't have anything in our new product okay so you will see one thing so let's come here and let's provide the price so i'll say I'll take this double code P R I C E price and let's say it's going to be 500 455 and this time if I save I think it will work let's save it and we get this error message we get this error message let's see what's the problem let's come back here in our in our terminals and let's try to find out what is the problems right down here so here we are making the post request everything's working fine let's come in the controller we are calling this model in our controller function and we are trying to access this one so here we are exporting this function it's an async function then we are trying to catch an error and we are getting this fail message but we are not getting any any response message okay so let's come here what the message we got so we get this fail message and we don't have any message here and we are getting this 404 response so let's come back to our editor so here we are back in our product model for a half or an hour and i found that i made a very silly mistake so here we are using the sluggify package but here we are not importing that and that's why we are not able to create the document okay so let's simply upload it and i think it will work so i'll say gi fy sluggify it's going to be a required model and i have to call this sluggify sluggify so this time i will save and it will work 100 percent so let's come back to our postman and let's try to make a request so right now we are getting this so here we have the details so we are trying to create the detail with the name let's change the name with something else so i'll say head phone so this is what i'm calling and if i click this time i'll get a fail message okay and this time what i'm getting that a tool name must have more or equal to 10 characters so this is the error which is getting from a validator which we have assigned that each product will have a more have a more than 10 characters so don't need to worry about it so let's call it best 20 2022 okay now this time i think it will work let's save it let's hit the request and here we are so here we have successfully created the product with the help of the model which we have defined and here you can able to find all the details which we have provided right down here so right now we are doing this testing in our postman application but when we take the data from the user on the same thing we're going to validate or we're going to validate all the data in the same way in backend in the browser okay 
in the database server so here we can easily able to get the data if i hit a request one more time and it's failed because this time what it's saying that name must be unique and that's the validator we have assigned to our name model so let's come here and let me show you so here we have said that name must be unique but here what we are trying to do here we are trying to create the product with the same name if i change this name to let's say Schweb and try to save it hit a request now we can able to create the product successfully so we have the products all products here now we can come to our compass in our database and here we can check so here we are in our new product if i refresh and here we hit the yes, and here we have the two product which we have created so let me bring this up so the very first product we have created this headphone best 2020 and here we have the second product which we said headphone shrub by 2020 so this is how we can create with the help of the model which we have defined and if we want to get the data from the database right up here into our postman application the way we did and reading the number of the documents from our internal server in the sample data file we can do that as well so for our cre our create function is working absolutely great now what we can do we can come here and we have to do the same thing for all these models which we have defined here so this one is for create we have written this async function we have to convert this get all product also into async functions and everything would be fine so let me do it quickly asyncs and i'll again come down here i'll run a try crash block inside this i'm going to send the request so i'll simply cut this portion i will send this and i will grab this from here because this is going to be the error is going to be the same and don't need to worry about we're going to for write a better error handling strategy so this time it be working so before i do that it's a async function and we have to get the data and this is how we can get it so this time i'll take another variable and i'll set all all produ cd product okay all product or a product let's call it product produ cd product not double d the product and again i will call the model new because this model contain all the data all the data in our database arrow duct product and i'll use this find method defined and this time i'm trying to find all the products so that's why i'm not passing any parameter but but you have to keep one thing in mind that you can provide callback function in find method so here i try to have that and here i have my product and that's what i will do i will simply delete remove this one and and i can remove this other one as well so if i save and here i have to do this await because it's up we are dealing with the promises so i'm awaiting this one and this time we can easily able to call all the information from our database so let's come back to our postman go to this all get all product and let's click this send and here we are so we have created two products in our database and that's all we can able to read right up here so we have two products and here in our database we have so here i'm into my mongoose database and i will can check that as well whether it's added into my database or not so let's come here and go to this collection section and in the collections let's click it one more time and so it's loading my net is little slow okay so bear with me and here you can able to find the two product category so this is the sample data which we have uploaded and this is the new product and here inside this we have this two products so shrimp by 2022 and this is headphone best 2022 so this is this is absolutely phenomenal so and i got very excited when i did this for the very first times that finally i created the document from my quote my application on a remote database service so i hope you should be proud of this so let's come back to this code again and we have to convert all this into our async function so we have done with this this get all product we have done with this created product and let's do this for this one as well so what i will do this simply get rid of this and we don't need this as well because this time we go mongo is going to be take care of it okay so again we have to convert this into an async function so i'll say async and it's going again i'll add a try and catch error inside this i'm going to wrap this simply cut this one and paste here get this 
catch block and paste down down so right down here save it this time and this part is going to be a tricky because this time we have to find the particular product which user are requesting and we're going to do that on the base of the id okay so let's come into this try and catch and let's take a variable c1 is const and pro duct product so here i'm taking the same variable because this this variable is not accessible in any other functions and that's why i'm taking the same name. you can check other name as well so i'll say await i'll call this new product and again i will use this find method and this time i want to find it on the base of the id so i'll say request dot p a r a m s params dot id okay and this id we have on this request object got it so we got the data and we will store into this and we will simply send the data right up here so i'll simply replace this one and it will work if everything's go well okay so let's come up here into our postman application and here we are in all get so let's come down and let's try to grab this id because every product will have a unique id i'll simply come here and i will go to the single product and simply remove this and paste the id and send the request and here we are getting this fail message so let's check what's the problem and what mistake we have made so these are the problem you will have you have to keep testing you have to figure out code that what's going wrong okay so let's come back to our application and we're doing everything great and my bad so this is the mistake which i have made it's fine by id okay so here we are trying to find the product on the base of the id and this function is coming from mongoose you can read the documentations so i will not get into that details so if i save it if i come to my postman application hit the request i'll get the product as you can see this the product name is head the headphone best 2022 if i come to back one again this is the one we have taken so best headphone if i come down here and go to the second product and copy this id and just try to keep eye on this one headphone shweb high so this time we try to access this product detail so i will come here and i will simply remove this id and i will hit the request once more time and here we are we can read the data on the base of the id that means that this function is also working we can successfully read the data from our database so get product is also working same thing we have to do we have to get rid of this one this part of the code i'll simply remove this part and i'll use this async function async try and catch try catch inside that i'm going to take all these codes paste inside this one and i will take this catch as well copy this one and i'll paste down here i'll save it and here i have to do some changes so i'll simply copy this entire line and let's come here i'm going to paste inside this and here we have to do a couple of changes because this time we want to update the product details so the plan i'm going with i don't want to update the entire data i want to update the particular field which user want to update okay that's the only field i want to update so first thing i have to find that product so for that i have to do the changes here so i'll say uh, find by id and update dat update so this is the method which is coming from mongoose and i want to update on the find the id and where i want to update the data i want to update that in request dot b o d y body and here i will take an object i'll uh, i want to update the particular field which user are updating so i will call new and inside this i will say true and the next i want to run a validator as well because here we have in our product model we have defined all these variable validators so we want to run that validator once more time when the user try to update the data so for that i will say i'll come here and write down here i'll take a run v a l i d a t o r validator is going to be true okay run validator is true so 
this time everything would be working fine so here I'm passing the same value same thing I have done try and catch here I'm catching the error here I'm sending the response which is coming from here and it's a, a wait so it will return me a promise I'm converting that I'm sending it so some simply save come to the postman and this time so if I so just try to keep it I so here I want to change the name this product name so best headphone 22 I want to change this to dollar thousand so if I save it and boom let's come here and here you can see dollar thousand so the product name is changed so in the same way I can change the so as you can see the every time we are updating our we are getting this value so everything's working fine if I want to update the price so let's do that so price and this time I say something huge okay this value I save it and if I to give the request so right now the price is 4555 if I send the request and here you will get this huge price and these all data is updating in our database server so let's come to our mongoos database server so this is the one which I am updating okay so if I refresh this one I'll get this huge price so this is how we can update the data in our database service and here what I'm doing I'm only updating this particular field I'm not updating the entire data and because of that I'm using this patch instead of put so if you use put that what it will do so if you use put what it will do it will update the entire data which the user are providing which I don't want to do that I want to update only that particular data which user are updating okay now let's come back and let's work on the delete so I'll simply get rid of this I'll wrap this entire and try and catch block so simply get this one get this paste up here and let's get this catch block as well and paste down here so here we have our try and catch let's convert this into async function async async function okay and it will return as a promise let's come down here I'll come up here and try to grab this this ID portion same thing we have to do here grab this one paste it down here and here we going to do the changes find by ID and delete delete and once again I'm telling you all these methods are coming from mongoose you can read the documentations and you can find everything so let's save it and let's copy this one and this is the so generally I don't want to send any response so it's no need to save it okay because I don't want to send response so I will simply get rid of that and this time it would be working fine okay so let's come back let's come back to the postman and let's try to delete the data so let's grab the ID ID till here okay and come to this delete product delete and simply remove this and send a request successfully okay as you can see we are getting this status 24204 which is for which is for deleting and if I come to my get product and right now you can see it's true but if I send the request we have only one product in our database and you can check from here as well so right now we have two the moment we refresh we'll have only one data and that's mean that our delete functionality is also working okay so in this we have covered so many things this is a quite huge lecture we are dealing with the async function so every functions function we have built here we have converted that in async functions and here we are using all the functionalities of mongoose find by ids find by id and update find by id delete get so we have covered tons of things hope you have learned i want you to go through this entire code the way we have refactor if make sure you watch once more time to understand everything whatever we have done here and if you have any questions still you have, if you have any questions write down in the comment area or read the comments if you don't get the answer you can personally ping the your questions in the comments so i can respond to that so with that said now let's move to the next video